Ladies and gentlemen, looking you straight in the face. Yeah. Looking you straight in the face is my ex-wife, Ronnie Bennett. Hi, Ronnie. Hi, how are you? Do you like being introduced as my ex-wife? It's better than being introduced as my wife. I really prefer <laughs> the word former. Former? Yeah. Former wife. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Number number three in a series. Number two in a series. You were number two. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then there was three and then there was four. Boy. Well, you know, I'm going to keep doing it until... I, I was thinking when we first connected up on Skype this morning to do this, that you and I have spent collectively way too much time either together or in our separate lives doing live radio or television because we are never late for anything ever <laughs> i wait till the exact second that i'm supposed to call you and then i call you <laughs> i used to work for a woman though who told me that when you had made an appointment with someone we'll talk on thursday at two or something like that mm -hmm. that she if it was her turn to call she would always wait until either she would call a few minutes early or wait and call a few minutes late because she didn't want anybody to think she was sitting around staring at the phone waiting for the call. <laughs> you know who else is right on time to the second? And you count them. When I've done, the, I had to go to like uh, uh, technical support at Microsoft. And I get somebody there and I got a problem and they say, well, I don't have an answer to the problem. But what I'll do is I will check with my people and I will get back to you and I will call you. What's a good time for you on Thursday? And I go, well, uh, three o'clock. They go, OK, we'll call you back at three o'clock on Thursday. Now, you know, when people say that, you sometimes never even hear from them, right? With technical support. Every time they have done that, right on the minute, my phone rings. The representative yeah. is ready to talk with you. I'm sitting around staring at the clock. <laughs> the representative is on the line waiting for you. Uh, uh, if you want to talk to them, press one. So you press one, and there she is. And I go, <laughs> this, you know, there's no other company I know of besides um, um, Microsoft that is that punctual or is that assiduous in doing their job. Uh, not Microsoft, excuse me, Apple. Apple. It was Apple. Excuse me. The whole story was about Apple. Y yeah, because Micro Microsoft, Microsoft sucks because you can't even find a uh, 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 tech support number for them. But no, uh, Apple. It was Apple. Oh, you can get one for Amazon, but they try to hide it. Yeah. Well, you, you, no, not Amazon. You, you, I was talking about Microsoft. No, no you, I'm that, just saying yeah. that that's true. What is true about Amazon? Amazon, it used to be that you, there was a thing you went to that when we call and then you give them the number and then they call you back. But that's not on the page anymore. No, and the other thing is that people, that, that the way to get a real phone number to real yeah. customer service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I had a problem with my bank a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And, um, and I had to call customer service. Mm -hmm. And... They aren't called customer service representatives there anymore. They're called bankers. Right. I answer the phone and tell you how to <laughs> fix your account, and I'm a banker. I'm a banker. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love like companies like Walmart that call the people who work for them associates. Uh, really? They're associates? Oh, how much, how much of the company do they own? <laughs> okay. And anyway, I discovered on a lot of those places that try to hide their customer service number mm -hmm. that if you just Google, it doesn't matter, any search engine, um, you know, like Amazon Helpline or something like that, you'll get it a lot faster than looking for it on their website. Well, if you Google it, Google usually has the number come up in big letters, in big yes. letters. Yes, what I'm saying is that you do that instead of, you know, spending 20 minutes trying to find it on the website. You know something? I've never said, what is the customer support number for Google? It might come up with a small number. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I've never done that. But then again, I've never bought anything from Google. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, anyway, so uh, I, I, I got up a half hour before this call. So if I seem a little groggy, uh, it's because I'm here with my extra. This is my double caffeine coffee this is uh, yes and i also bought one called uh napalm you uh, didn't used to drink coffee i know i didn't now i do two cups a day oh. yeah but it, oh like it's like a, it's some kind of disease i've got oh you're drinking no, coffee no, no, no. Oh. i just you know you never did before 
Or you didn't when we were living together. Well, anyway, so I got one called Napalm, and their slogan is, uh, um, uh, the smell of napalm in the morning. <laughs> you know, coffee, I always knew that coffee gave me a boost in the morning. But it's only been in the last couple of years, which means, of course, I relate it to the cancer, but I don't know that it is. But there's a real difference now. When I first sit up in bed and, you know, I'm about to get up and I really, it was so comfortable. It's always so comfortable. You don't want to get up. Right. Um, it, uh, and I get, I thought, Boy, how am I going to get through this? You know, I kind of wish, you know, someone just brought me the cup of coffee that I could do until I woke up enough. But no, I have to go make the coffee. And I'm thinking, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And as soon as the coffee's ready, as soon as I've had the first few sips, I can feel a real jolt that, really? oh, I'm awake now. No, I don't need to go back to bed. <laughs> really? I I just stay tired. You know, I mean, the co- I, I don't, I, the coffee does something, but it doesn't do a lot. I'll tell you what happened. So I've got this neuropathy, right? So my, I have a friend who has neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy, and he's been taking um, um, Lyrica. And he says, it's great, it really helps. So I called my urologist and I said, can I get Lyrica? And he said, sure. You know, so I put in a prescription for it. Well, it's a great drug. Yeah, it puts me to sleep and I am out for eight hours, okay? In fact, today I was out for eight and a half hours. <laughs> All right. And it's pretty solid sleep, too. I don't even get up to pee or do anything like that. Uh, but the thing it does is it makes me clumsy. Okay. Good thing you don't have to drive a car. It makes me a bit clumsy. And uh, it is um, um, uh, the other thing is that when I'm trying to do simple things like put the whole show together and get it on. I have to really think about which button to push. Where before it was just like, blah, 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 blah. But it does, and I, that's, you know, a, that's a point I wanted to bring up to you. you know. I don't know that, just let me say this. That yeah. I'm not sure that that's the drug, that I have to do that. There are certain things, especially on a keyboard and mm-hmm. doing HTML to get my stories look pretty and everything, Yeah. Um, that I think I used to do what you described it. You just hit the buttons. You don't even think what you've done it so many times. Your yeah, fingers do it automatically. Exactly. And now I have to think a little harder. Not terribly, but I'm aware of, wait, what's the next step in this procedure? Um, and I'm, so I'm not sure it's the drug. Maybe it's just old age. Well, that could be. But I, I think I find that it's happening more with the drug. That There are certain things I, I screw up and don't on. don't take it so much. Huh? And don't take it so much. Yeah, well, I take it. I think that's to, a hint. <laughs> you're supposed to take it twice a day, and I take it once a day. Uh, so that's one good thing. The only thing is, I'll take it twice a day, like today, because I don't have a show to do tonight. So I don't mind taking one during the day as well. But it's getting a little less. I'm getting a little more the ability to do these things. So, you know, but what I, here was the point. I find that doctors are willing to give you almost any drug. To That's sh- not true. It's all minute, dependent wait, on the doctor. Wait a minute. Hold on. To, uh, when you get older, to shut you up because they figure, ah. Well. I don't think so. I don't think so. I went through terrible, terrible, terrible pains with my hands, with all the other body pains I oh, was yeah. having for you most were of the summer. This, yeah. And nobody ever said a word to me about those kind of drugs. They said, the first one said to me, have you tried Advil? <laughs> and um, it ended up that at the, when the pains were at their worst, an Advil um, with, with an extra strength Tylenol in the middle between two Advil mm-hmm. uh, you know, pills uh, worked. Yeah. Well, you know what? What they've said over the years, the most powerful painkiller you've got in your cabinet is aspirin. That well, that has a lot of stomach problems and others. Well, they have it so it's coated and it doesn't as much. But the thing is, they said that if aspirin were invented today, it would be a controlled substance. I've been hearing that for 40 years. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the, no, that when it was invented, nobody thought about that. But uh, it is a, it's always been a very strong drug. you got a headache, the headache goes away, you know? And if your well, stomach can take it, it's good. Because there's always some contraindication. There are plenty of others that work, too. 
And uh, Marjorie has uh, this uh, uh, extra strength uh, ibuprofen 800s, uh, ibuprofen 800s, which are prescription. That works. That's really good, you know. Yeah, uh, I guess so. so. I don't have that many. I mean, this this summer bout of pain. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing like that's ever happened in my life, and I've occasionally had a headache. Mostly, I don't have pain. Well, you you got you got cancer. My wife has <laughs> really bad back pains, but they give her like really heavy duty, like uh, Dilaudid and so on, as painkillers. But they but they they monitor her rigorously to make sure she doesn't become addicted. I mean, if if it's doing something to relieve the pain, it's not going to be addictive. But if you do too much, where it just gets you high, then you got a problem. You know, yeah, I'm not sure. I'll I'm, ask well, them, what what so. do you think for especially for older people who are going to need it? That they they've got this war on opioids. Well, here's the thing about that, and I wrote I, I did a column about it, so I won't go on at any mm-hmm. length. But um, is for all the screaming and yelling, and it's a terrible thing having pe- this many people die of opioids every day. Mm-hmm. But it's not old people who are doing it. And there are old people with chronic pain that have been using those drugs responsibly for years. And then they're suddenly cut off because doctors and health centers have decided they have to be part of helping the opioid problem. Or I don't know if whether the government checks in on them or not um, of, of how many prescriptions they're writing of different things. From what I've read, it would be a good idea if somebody checked in on some of those people who are writing so many prescriptions. But um, I, uh, I don't. It's not old people, and you can't just substitute an aspirin and expect it to do the same job. Yeah. Well, the thing is that my wife uh, takes these these what are essentially opioids um, for her pain. Once a year, she has to have a pee test. Mm-hmm. Because they want to make sure she doesn't have marijuana in her system, and she said, "Why, you know?" And they said, "It's just federal law. We can't prescribe it if you've got marijuana in your system." And of course, it's, she loves. Well, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Is has New York State yet legalized? No. No, they, they, we have it for medical purposes. However, but so you know. why couldn't she be taking it for that? Well, of course, but what I'm saying is they still say we, we have to give you a pee test to make sure you're not taking marijuana because the, the law says we can't give you opioids. Now, I find that kind of strange, but she loves her pot, so once a year she has to like not pee and not uh, smoke for three weeks. And, oh, yeah. And, and, yeah. and then she can get a clean test, or, or I give her my urine and she goes in with that. Uh, no, no. Uh, but I mean, so I mean, they're getting. What I'm saying is, old people need their pain relieved, and this war on opioids is killing their chance for getting the drugs they need to relieve their pain. That's and, what I and said. you're right; it is younger people. The, if you look at the reports on television, oh, my daughter who was 13 died of an opioid, and it's always kids. It's not the older people. It only says. Oh, old Joe, who was 85, died of an opioid overdose because he took too much. No, you don't hear that. You know what's funny about that with old people, or especially old people who are dying of mm-hmm. something, is that when my mother was, um, when I got there to take care of her, she had a bottle of just pain pills, whatever they were, and a bottle of liquid morphine. And the doctor had explained to me how to use them. Well, my mother never said anything about pain. And I had no idea if she was in pain or just and being stoic or what. Mm-hmm. And so one day she finally she said, do you think we could try the liquid morphine? Well, yes. Have you been sitting there hurting all this time, Mom, without telling me? So we did. And she really got weird in the head and started hallucinating. And we had some very strange but funny conversations. And eventually it wore off. And she said to me, I'm not going to do that. That would, I might get addicted. That did terrible things to me. And I'm thinking this woman can't get out of bed on her own. And she's worried about running down to the corner and robbing the candy store. Yeah, right. (laughs) Exactly. Well, you know, in those days, morphine was maybe the biggest painkiller we had. But these painkillers we've got now are make morphine look like a baby. 
you know. Well, I told you my little fentanyl story. No, no. Um, when I was the morning after the surgery, the big surgery, somebody, and I only remember this vaguely, came and it, they, they, I remember them pushing my back to get me s- to sit up. Mm-hmm. And he puts, I saw this little metal thing that I couldn't see too clearly. And he put it in the middle of my back. And I, all I was thinking is, mm-hmm. and now he's going to have me lie down and there's a metal thing poking in my back. That's going to hurt. And he laid me down and it didn't hurt. And for three days, nobody had to be bringing me pain pills or anything. I just was, you know, coming out of 12 hours or more of, of uh, anesthesia and being cut open and all of that. And on the after three days, the same guy came and took that thing out of my back. And I later found out it was fentanyl. And I am here to tell you, I know exactly how people get hooked on that. <laughs> <laughs> it is Oh, it was it wasn't that just that the pain went away. Mm-hmm. It was that I just felt so good. Completely out of it and bad, but I've sure felt good. Well, I mean, yeah, but you know what happens? You had fentanyl. Number one, you had it administered to you under controlled situations where with drug addicts, it's, you know, they don't know how much fentanyl is in something and it can kill them. But also, you had real pain and the fentanyl goes to, to the job of taking care of that pain. The side effect is it makes you feel real good. You know, well, you know, only once before um, I had morphine many decades ago for something. In fact, I still lived in Marin County then. Mm-hmm. It was before we were even married. And uh, by the way, we're talking about being drug addicts now, folks. Go yes, ahead. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I had some kind of terrible pain and I was in the hospital and they kept upping whatever painkillers they had in those days until we got to morphine. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah, I really hallucinated during that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't, uh, I felt that fentanyl made me feel, it, it didn't make me feel this wonderful, wonderful warmth and goodness all around me and everything that fentanyl did. Um, but it was pretty, It was, yeah, I understood that they were hallucinations, so they were kind of fun to watch. Well, I don't. But, I, oh, but yeah. it didn't take away the pain. Yeah. It just made me not care. Not care. So I could lie there and think, "Gee, that may be the worst pain I've ever had." And then I would go off thinking about something else. Well, fuck it. I'm feeling too good. I won't let the pain <laughs> get to me. I, uh, uh, you know, I mean, these are, these are the pills. They're actually it's lyrical, but lyrica is uh, pre gabalin. It's called. And um, the first couple of days I took it, I mean, I got really high. I mean, I you know now I don't as much. Why do you take a sleeping? It's not a, no, during the day because they say take it twice a day. Okay, but they what, this is also what, for daytime use. I mean, now that I take it, if I take it during the day, I don't go to sleep. I think what happens is it isn't doesn't put me to sleep. It keeps me asleep. Okay, so that if I if I didn't want to go to sleep, I just go back to doing whatever I was doing with a little bit of the pregabalin in me. Okay, and a little bit of the buzz that it gives me, but uh, if I want to go to sleep, it puts me out, and I, 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 today I was out for eight and a half hours. You know, amazing. Good for you. Hmm? I don't get that much sleep here. I mean, I get enough sleep now with I use cannabis, but um, but eight and a half is I can't ever make it. That oh yeah, yeah. Make a big deal out of the fact you live in a state where you can easily get cannabis. You, know? you just walk into a little store. Just, they oh, shut stores. up! Shut up! <laughs> you know, I mean, I've often said, do I have to get cancer in order to smoke marijuana? You know, come on. You know, I mean, it, 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 I don't smoke it. I take edibles. This whole idea of it being medically available here in New York. I mean, you would think New York would be the first state to legalize it. Right. But no, you got Colorado, you know, come on, give me a break. You know, it still isn't legal here. You still have to go get a prescription from your doctor. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, it's changing faster than most things change. Especially most taboo kinds of things don't change very frequently. And when they do, it takes a long, long time. Cannabis is going much faster, and it looks like psilocybin may join it um, in the next election. Well, you saw the thing on 60 Minutes. Yes. But yeah. Th- yeah. What did you think um, of it? Because you you kind of gone through that. 
Yeah, and I didn't think it was a very good piece. I didn't like it. It was, it was just so superficial that you know this one very lovely lady, isn't she? She was so pretty. That old woman who I've forgotten what kind of cancer she had. Yeah, so pretty. Um, but uh, it, it was it was pretty it was superficial compared to. In case people don't know, this was a a thing, piece of sixty minutes did on the use of psilocybin uh, with. With cancer patients and other people. Or end of life anxiety. End of life anxiety, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, which is what I did last December. And it works. You did it and it works. Um, yes, it does. And more and more uh, respected hospitals like NYU and John Hopkins, they've both been testing psilocybin and other psychedelics for several years now. And some other um, research facilities are joining them and it's... And it's on the ballot in Oregon and in Denver. Not yeah. all of Colorado, just Denver. Just Denver. <laughs> um, uh, for the ne for next year's elections. So we'll see what happens. Well, I mean, the thing is that uh, it's funny that they say, oh, well, some of these drugs actually may be good for people, blah, 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 blah. Look, we knew that. LSD, we knew, was very good for handling a lot of different situations. Uh, and that it was very good if you had uh, if you had cancer, for instance, and helping you deal with it. Uh, but they stopped all um, all research into LSD because suddenly it became a news fad to say, "Oh, look, this drug is going is ruining our youth," you know. And so uh, LSD, a drug which had re really good reason to be looking into it, okay because it was good at, at curing a lot of things and getting people to stop a lot of things. It was good with addiction, oddly enough. It was completely stifled. And we haven't done anything with it in something like 30, 40 years. And now they're looking at it and say, well, hey, it oh, might be good. Well, that's true. They started. You have to get permission from the government. But these, the, these usually college-affiliated research centers that are working with that started eight or ten years ago at least, and they've been doing it very quietly and not making any noise about it because of what you just talked about, or, yeah. you know. But, um, and they're making just astonishing discoveries. Well, a guy by the name of Tim Leary and Richard Albert were working at, I think, Harvard, and they were studying LSD, and they found in one study they did where they went to a prison that they lowered the recidivism rate by, I think, 80% with people who had taken LSD. Uh, because, you know, you, you then become introspective and you start getting feelings about yourself and you can start, it's kind of a form of psychoanalysis. It is a form of psychoanalysis because what LSD was break down the barrier between the conscious and the subconscious and they started flowing into each other and you started seeing stuff about yourself you normally didn't see. And they studied that and of course they were then thrown out of Harvard for studying it. So, of course, Tim Leary became this, what can we call it, uh, this, uh, uh, trumpeter for drugs, and uh, Richard Alpert became Baba Ramdas, and that's the end of that story, <laughs> you know. But it, but it was being studied for those things, and it, it was terrible that all of a sudden it, it was stifled, okay? You know, anytime you have to go out and get federal approval for everything, it gets stifled, so... But uh, the, but the psilocybin helped you, and uh, it may be, and there may be other drugs like psilocybin. I mean, it doesn't have to there be just many. Huh? There, we we know of many. I mean, we the, the, uh, the, the original drug of this sort, the one that the Indians used, was peyote, which probably has some curative effects that way. But it, um, um, how long can I, can I ask you how long you were under the drug? To get the effect? I don't remember. Five hours? Five hours, yeah. I mean, that isn't what it takes to get yeah. an effect. That's how long before it stops being effective. Well, they said know? one of the reasons why these drugs never became popular was because we have to remember that psychiatrists are, are a professional business that makes money. And if you want put somebody on LSD or on psilocybin, you have to take anywhere from five to eight hours of sitting there with them, guiding them on their trip and, and getting the benefits out of it. And that a lot of doctors didn't want to have to spend that much time. 
I don't think that had anything to do with the government taking. No, not him. the government, but I'm saying a lot of a lot of a lot of psychiatrists say, "Oh, I got to spend eight hours with somebody. I have to sit so there." I with wouldn't them. take I wouldn't take that on the word of a psychiatrist. I have no idea if he's studied this, if he knows anything about exactly. it. Exactly. Um, so I don't think that's an argument to be made. I don't think any. But the of person them. you were with spent all that time with you, right? Yes. Yeah. And talking to you, and, and I paid dearly for that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, you should. And, and I'm being paid in money, not not in you know. Yeah, and you had to pay for it, and it's too bad that Medicare doesn't take care of it. You know. Well, I see it as something that if it's as promising as these tests, and you should really take the time to look online and see the results of these tests. They're jaw droppingly good. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of what they've done for people, mm. and uh, and I can see that happening, you know. And I th I think more swiftly than it usually does. But then you have to get. Then the one thing though is you have to get Medicare to approve it, and and to get Medicare to approve it takes a while, you know. Take it, it, they're they're a little reluctant on stuff like that. Um, it. Uh, you know, I don't know what the steps are, and I think it's kind of, I don't want to talk about it. It kind of bores me, sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. No. Uh, what the steps well, are. All, we're, all I'm trying to say is there are altern alternatives to to uh, painkillers, you know, I mean, and to opioids and so on. And uh, I'm sure this has gone a long, that went a long way to help you through this whole thing. And well, um, not that if, if they necessarily have anything to do with pain. Mm hmm psychic pain but i mean physical pain i'm not so sure yeah um and different drugs do slightly different things and mm -hmm. so um what what psilocybin and uh, lsd is related closely related to psilocybin yeah um is uh you know what never mind <laughs> okay well never mind anyway because we've run over time we have. Yes, we just kept talking and talking and talking and talking before you know it. Uh, usually we do this for 25 minutes. We're up to 27 minutes right now. And and I told you before we started, you said, what do you want to talk about today? And I said, uh, let's. Uh, we should talk about Trump. Oh, we didn't get to that, did Listen, we? Listen, forget it. Let's run over here. Uh, well, <laughs> your current feelings on Donald Trump. To begin with, my first feeling is, do you ever hear anybody in the news ever refer to him as President Trump? No, I haven't noticed they, one. They say, they say Trump. Sometimes they say Mr. Trump. No, Nobody should always say, the first on the first mention, it should always be President. They don't They do not do that with him. I haven't noticed. I mean, it's yeah. just, all the rules are so broken, there's no point in trying to stand up for any of them yeah. anymore. Yeah, well, so are, uh, we, are, we, are we now living with an insane crook? Is that what we're doing? Apparently, but you know yeah. what? My bigger feeling is the two bigger feelings this week. Both of them um, heartbreaking, deeply heartbreaking, is the death of Elijah Cummings. Mm -hmm. It's a great, great, and he was only 68. And yeah, yeah. I know to someone who's 25 to say only 68 sounds really stupid, but it's not the age people should be dying. At. They say he was sick for something like 20 years, that he has been battling whatever it was for 20 years. I don't know. But the yeah. other thing was the Kurds. Yeah. So. I am right now, since that happened, it, I'm shamed. You know, my country has made me feel shame about my country. Yeah. And it, it's just awful. It's just awful. I read this morning, I didn't understand this before, that the Kurds are the largest ethnic group in the world that does not have a land. Yeah. A, a country. Yeah. Um. And and they just made them all leave without making any, putting any thought, ideas, or anything about where they would go. Well, they, they had some land that they claimed uh, 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 above Iraq, and Iraq was always trying to attack them and everything. But they were always pretty peaceful people. It's only in the last couple of years that they've had to get a little more uh, warlike because they've had to protect themselves, you know. Well, they took the brunt of everything of, of cleaning up ISIS to the degree that it is cleaned up. Yeah. Um, I well, mean, 11,000 of their people died to six of 
hours. Well, they, they were responsible for cleaning up Al Qaeda for Iraq. You know. Well, this week I'm not about that. It's just. It just makes you ashamed that you're. You, you know what it is? And I've said this a dozen times on the program. When I was raised as a child in school, I was taught all the good things about America and what we do and what we don't do and why we're good and why they're bad, okay? And all of a sudden I'm going, all these things I learned in school and I thought was America isn't America anymore. I, I think the point is that you're right, and is that, is that because you start learning them when you're, what, eight, nine, ten years old, yeah. you think that they're permanent. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And then it turns out they're not well, permanent. Yeah. I mean, it's happened before to me. Things I thought were set in stone turned out not to be set in stone. But still, uh, it's what it is. And it was just an overwhelmingly sad week. And if you look at it from a certain perspective, mm -hmm. the lies from Mick Mul Mulvaney is... May, Mul 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 Mulvaney. Yeah. yeah. The, the lie, you know, the lie and then the take back of the a lie and everything. It's just a shaming in a way. I mean, um, and, and the Doral thing, I mean, you can't, could he, could any human, even that human being truly believe that that was a good thing to do? Well, apparently he did. And, well, and then apparently he saw... He only said he did. You can't trust any word that comes from that man's mouth. Well, apparently he's, he or somebody close to him saw the blowback was so bad on it and that perhaps he would be in jeopardy through the emoluments clause that they had better get out of Doral and go somewhere else, you know. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, look, I mean, Doral was not a bad idea for a location if he didn't own it. It's a terrible so, well, idea. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. If he didn't own it. No, it's still a terrible idea you wouldn't choose it. You know how many people who lived there were on TV yesterday saying airplanes go over this every 20 minutes? Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> well, anyway, the point the point I'm making is is that... And bed bugs. Bed bugs. <laughs> bed bugs? That's not a joke. They have bed bugs at the round? Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and how did you enjoy your trip to America? <laughs> yeah, it makes it just thinking about it kind of makes me feel itchy. Um, so it it was, it was a very very bad week. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 and it we we have a president who's completely. I think the thing that really worries me most of all is we don't have a president who can serve. He's he's literally so unhinged that he can't get the job done. Not that he's ever been doing it. He's too busy watching television and and getting his hints of what to do from the, his TV shows. And and he's, he spends too much time writing tweets, going and holding these Nazi-like rallies uh, in, in, in all parts of the country. I want to know when he ever has time. I'm surprised he had time to withdraw troops from uh, from Syria. It's not like he went over there and did it, you no, know. <laughs> no, but he just waves his hand. He says, "That's it," you know, and and he said he he acted like he solved the problem this week. That was the pri part that really got to me, is that he pretended like he had solved the problem. Oh well, I solved you know, it now. What do you mean you created it? You know, one of the things I'm sorry about. Yeah. Is that you know history has to take time to bubble up and mm -hmm. mellow and be able to see what happened from a distance of yeah, time yeah. Um, before we really know what was important and what wasn't in history. I'm sorry, I won't be here to see what they write about the Trump presidency, whether it ends soon or not, mm -hmm. um, th 20, 30 years from now. Yeah. You know, um, that, uh, that, that be able to see it a little more clearly than so many of us that oh, it, 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 to it, it right it, now. Uh, it's going to go down as the period of time when nothing happened, okay, when a guy sat in the office and didn't do anything. And well, the problem is that he's done a great deal of damage. He's done a great There's deal something of like 150 environmental rollbacks he's done with executive orders. Yeah. And, and this is like things like now coal companies are allowed to pour their sludge into the local river, things like that. Well, I think our great relief in all of this 
is that the sum total of uh, global warming is that the entire lower part of uh, Florida will be underwater. And that includes Doral. <laughs> okay, so, you know. And of course, well, I think everything is moot in terms of climate change. And yeah, yeah. Nobody will have time to worry about what the, what yeah. was the Donald Trump presidency like if we're. I'm I'm worried that uh, the polar bears' uh, penises are getting smaller. They are. Now, don't give me that like, oh, Alex, there you go again, because that's important. <laughs> because there you go again, Alex. You always go for sex. They need their Sorry. they need their penises to reproduce. That's what I'm saying. You know, and if they've got their penises are too small, the pen the polar women are going to go. I don't want that. <laughs> Have we ever gotten through a conversation without having to discuss sex? No, but we finished it that way. Uh, anyway, I know. There's not going to be any snow anyway for them. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible. And also, the you know, polar ice caps are shrinking, and they oh, it's just it's. And he says there's no global warming. <laughs> you know, give me a break. You know, hey, we had a really cool summer this year. There's no global warming. It has nothing to do with it. That's why it was cooler, you know? Anyway. Hey, listen, we've... We... I love that there's the people who have said to help explain that. Yeah. The people who have said, what the problem is, is you don't know the difference between weather and climate. Ah, very good. And, those are, and I think that's, you know, that's... Yeah. I'm not a meteorologist. It's not a distinction I ever made before in my life. Yeah. But... Makes things easier to understand. Hey, listen, we've run over by oh, I don't know, twelve minutes or something like that from what we normally do. But gee, this has been this has been great. I've enjoyed this. We've had some, and and the reason we went over is we've had a lot of stuff to talk about. Always yeah. great talking to you, Ronnie Bennett. They can find you at your blog, which is timegoesby.net. Do we have to remind them? It is really a great blog. It's one of the great blogs. Oh, and, thank you. And one of the originals, I might add. I mean, you were in there really early. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I started this one. Fifteen years. And uh, we'll see you another couple of weeks, okay? Yes. Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen.